Welcome to Big Ten Men's Soccer in 10, which is a quick look at the season ahead and reflection on great moments in program history of the nine Big Ten men's soccer teams. That means a visit with all nine head coaches and one special guest from each university. I'm Dean Linke, joined by the man we call the professor, Chris Monroe, former goalkeeper at Indiana. Hello, professor. Hey, Dean. Great to be here. I'm so excited as we put the spotlight on the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. That means their top man now in his second season, Jim McKeldry, and a U.S. Soccer Hall of Famer, a Rutgers Hall of Famer, and, of course, the Sporting KC top man, Peter Vermees. Hello, Jim, and hello, Peter. Hey, Great to be here. All right, Jim, we're going to start with you as the top man now in your second season. What are your expectations for the club? Yeah, you know, I think our first year was just trying to kind of change a little bit of the culture and uh, try to increase our standards a little bit, you know, looking at the history that we have at, at Rutgers with guys like Peter and, and many other players that came through the ranks, a lot of successful teams. Uh, you know, I think we take that seriously, but also can we start writing our own history a little bit as well. So, uh, you know, we're excited about the future of this group. We brought in some good guys this first year that we thought did well. Uh, you know, we need to increase our depth a little bit, which is something that we think we've addressed in this 2020 class. But, you know, we couldn't be more excited about the future of our, our program, but also even just the, you know, the, the, all the stuff that this university is putting uh, into our program. You know, we feel lucky and uh, I'm just happy to be here. Well, coming to the Big Ten after such a successful stint in the Atlantic Ten, uh, 2017 Elite Eight appearance, multiple conference titles, uh, what was your impression in your first season of the Big Ten style of play, and how does that compare uh, to how you'd like to see Rutgers play moving forward? Yeah, I don't think there was much of a surprise. There's a lot of talent, a lot of good coaches, um, a lot of great facilities. So, uh, you know, I was, I was – I knew coming in that there's going to be some challenges that we have to uh, address with our group to be able to compete at that level. You know, I think the biggest thing that we felt we were, uh, again, a little bit of lack of depth. Uh, I think we've got uh, some talent in our group, but uh, you need to increase that. You know, the season can be a grind, uh, especially as you get into the Big Ten when you're playing Tuesday, Sunday, Tuesday, Sunday. It can be really rough. So, uh, you know, it's something that we knew that we have to, um, you know, go out and, and, attract good players, not only from New Jersey, but from anywhere uh, that we feel can help our program. But the talent is very good in our conference. We feel it's the, uh, one of the best conferences in the country. So, um, but that's why I'm, I'm here. That's why I'm excited to be here and, uh, you know, embrace those challenges, embrace the high expectations and, and get after it. Obviously one of the greatest players ever from New Jersey, Peter Vermees. Peter, we met in 1989 as you were qualifying for the World Cup. We were reconnected with the Colorado Rapids where you made the transition and you were the MLS Defender of the Year. So first off, it's always great to see you. If I even see the name Peter Vermees, it makes me smile just by the way you carry yourself. But I got to ask you, Peter, when you reflect on your days at Rutgers, what did that mean to you? Yeah, um, I, I look at it as a, a stepping stone um, into my professional career. Um, at the time, you know, Bob Riasso was the coach. Um, you know, he was an icon of soccer um, during his time at, at the university. Um, and, and what he did was he helped propel um, the, the university and the, and the sport of soccer um, in New Jersey. Uh, and so I was, I was very lucky to be a part of it because Bob really tried to run the team um, at a very high standard. And, you know, it's what I always wanted in anything that I was a part of. I always, um, you know, uh, you know me, Dean, I, I, I'm a perfectionist and I, and I always want to be involved with the best and, and always striving to be the best. And so Bob created that environment, that culture, and it was a pleasure to be a part of it. Well, you've coached a number of high-profile Big Ten alumni over the years, including Roger Espinoza, Suni Saad, and my old uh, IU teammate, Jake Peterson. How have college players like these added value to the club over the years, and does their impact differ uh, to that maybe of a homegrown player, an international signing, et cetera? Well, all those guys were at a, at a different time period, right? And so they were the foundation of Major League Soccer. Um, guys coming out of college, that was the foundation of everybody's team. What's changed is that um, because we have our pro pathway and you have your academy, you have your second team, um, players are choosing um, in certain instances to stay with the club and, and use that sort of as their, if you will, their education, right? Their, their, their soccer education. Um, it's not to say that players still can't come out of uh, college and make it into our league because it still happens. Um, I just think it's, it's not as many players as it has been in the past. 
but at the same time, those guys had a major impact on this club and, and a lot of players that have been in um, college and have gone through that pathway have had an incredible impact on, on the game of MLS and how it's evolved. Well, speaking even more about college, like we said, member of the Rutgers Hall of Fame, what does it mean to you personally to have someone like Jim in charge of the club and the program, uh, a New Jersey guy himself who really understands and appreciates the history of Rutgers University? Yeah, so first of all, I got some history with Jim, right? So I, I already know him. We played uh, together, and um, I, I've always loved his dedication to the game. Um, when he got the job, he reached out. We chatted on the phone, and you know, when you heard his answer just a moment ago, and he talks about the culture and raising the standards, I, I think any coach today has to have those qualities um, of leadership if they're going to be successful. You can't be the coach who, who only goes out these days and can set up a training session and lay some cones down. It's, it's so much more than that. You're, you're, you're dealing with people. You're dealing with um, individuals on and off the field. You, you have to um, look at the whole person. It's not just a soccer player on the field. And I think Jim has a, has a great uh, focus in that area. And I think it's one of the reasons why he, in such a short period of time, just in last year, how he already turned the team around. And more importantly, you can see it even by the way that the guys enjoy and the way that they, they enjoy playing the game. Jim, when you think Peter Vermees and Alexi Lalas, you think superstars, but not enough people think Rutgers. How important is it for you to create the next Peter Vermees and Alexi Lalas' out of Rutgers? Yeah, I think, you know, Peter just touched on it. I think, you know, the, the soccer climate's a little bit different these days. You know, you've got young players that are the top players in the country that may choose to stay with their you know, academy and with their MLS club and, and go that direction. Some guys are even going overseas, but the guys that end up coming to us still have those dreams of playing at the highest level. So part of my job that I take seriously is, is letting them know what I think they need to do to get to that level. And, and it's up to them to put the time in the effort in and to also, you know, kind of be part of our uh, program here. And, and, you know, as we always say, like team success equals kind of individual success eventually. So the better we do, the better it is for these individuals. But, you know, they all have dreams of playing as, as pros. So, uh, you know, we want to make sure that we're giving them that opportunity. And, and again, as Peter said, we want uh, to put this uh, program in a professional environment. We're very lucky in the facilities. My boss, Pat Hobbs, the AD here, uh, has put a lot of money into the, the facilities here. So we feel that if kids aren't ready to go uh, at the pro or sign a homegrown um, contract, that this is the next best step for them. And it can kind of keep that, that dream alive of playing as a pro while also getting an education. And, uh, and if they're good enough, they'll get seen and, and get picked up. And if they're not, at the end of the day, they'll have a, a degree to fall back on. But yeah, I think uh, all of our guys that come in, that's how we're recruiting as well. We want guys that have ambition right? Because then they're willing to push it even harder and, and, uh, and put in the, the time and the commitment needed to, to reach the level that they think they can, they can reach. Peter Vermees, we're honored that you could join us for Big Ten in 10. Still have so much excitement thinking about you with the Colorado Rapids, thinking about you almost scoring against Walter Zenga. You are a legend. Congratulations on all your success because it, it's proof that hard work pays off. You're a testament to that. Thank you so much, Peter. My pleasure. Thank you. And Jim McKeldry, now in your second season, we know you're returning Rutgers to the glory days. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me, Dean. Appreciate it. All right, for Chris Monroe, I'm Dean Linky. That's Big Ten in 10, Rutgers, Scarlet Knights. <laughs>